I, don't, I cannot promise that this will be perfect in one day because it's very recently there's been a new paper published about how the periodic table could get enormously bigger than we imagine now. At the moment, the periodic table looks pretty complete. All 118 elements and each has its little hole where it sits. And by and large, we understand the structure pretty well. Each element has a nucleus in the middle that contains protons that are positively charged and neutrons that have no charge and electrons going round. And the shape of the periodic table, where all the elements sit, is dictated by how the electrons are arranged around the nucleus. Now in this case, a Finnish chemist, or he may be physicist, I don't know, a Finnish scientist, has asked what would happen if we put a lot more electrons into atoms, made them very much bigger. So he's not looking at the nucleus at all, but just looking at the way the electrons are arranged. And the point is that at the moment, the electrons can go into four types of slightly different shells, which are called by strange names, S, P, D, and F. The letters come from old-fashioned names, sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental, but nobody ever uses those names, just the letters. Now, the excitement of going higher in the periodic table is that a new sort of shell called G, G for George, G for Germany, I don't know, um, which has never been seen, and the question is how that would fill up. And what's interesting about the periodic table at the moment is the electrons fill up in an order that is not quite what one might expect. That's why in the periodic table at the moment, we get these groups of elements, the rare earth and the actinides, the uranium type elements, which are separate because they really fill it, fit in to the space here between barium and, and hafnium. You can see there's a space there with no letters, but just lots of numbers, 57 to 71 and so on. The question is, if you have another row, where will the G electrons fit in? So this is the paper published in a journal called PCCP only a few days ago. And if we turn over the page, we can see what his conclusion is. Here is the periodic table as we know, up to this line, with the holes here where 57 to 71 and 89 to 103 fit in. And so his calculations show that when you get to 118, as you might expect, you go to 119, 120. And then at 120, this G row here, you can see 5G comes in. So it's in a special place that it goes to 138. Nobody has any idea what they might be called because if we ever made them, there'd only be one or two atoms, but these G elements. And then what is interesting is that after that, he calculates the next two elements will go here, 139, 140, underneath boron and carbon. But then there'll be another hole, and you'll go through a whole string from 141 to 155. So the periodic table will suddenly have another gap that will appear here. And then when you get to 155, instead of going on along here, you jump down to there and then to there before you go back to there. That's a right old mess. Well, it's quite surprising. It's only a calculation. Nobody knows whether he's right. And what's more to the point, I very much doubt if anybody will prepare all of these elements within either my lifetime or the lifetime of anybody reading these papers. So you can ask, what's the point of doing this? And the answer is that these are interesting calculations because perhaps by doing these calculations, we will understand a bit more about our present periodic table.
At the moment, the periodic table is quite nice and compact, fits inside my pen. But if we had this bigger one, it would just go on and on and on. So from the point of view of chemistry, we haven't learnt very much from this periodic table. But what it's done is to make us think. And anything that makes scientists think is really good. <laughs>